Hello friends and fellow collectors, Flip Young here checking in to review this Max Factory Figma Iron Man Mark 7 figure. And uh, taking a look at the armor of um, Iron Man here, this is the same armor that he donned on that first, you know, um, Avengers movie. And um, taking a quick look at the box, it does come with this open window packaging. It does uh, gives us it, it gives us a, a chance to peek at the figure prior to opening, you know, or without having to open the, the box. So, um taking a look from you know from outside that box it does come with um, two blaster hands and two flight hands here um, of course the hands are interchangeable it does have these um, hand blasters and of course the foot thrusters on the side of the packaging you would see a picture of Iron Man here um, the the picture of the actual figure itself on the back a few options you know or should I say suggestions of how to pose him on your shelves on the other side we would have this you know famous landing pose of Iron Man so let's um of course go ahead and open the box and take a look at the figure and at the bottom portion of the box you would uh, see that he does come with uh, more you know interchangeable hands here and he also has that standard Figma stand for the figure so let's go ahead and open the figure and I'm not going to get into f you know further detail as far as the inclusions of the figure or the accessories since we do have a lot of reviews um regarding this figure already and of course uh, paying a lot of attention for for the for the accessories so I would go or I would jump straight to the figure here I did pre-open the box by the way you know just just for the unboxing uh, portion of this um, video to be faster so first thing you would notice taking a look at the figure is the of course the the paint it does have this um, awesome paint for me it does capture you know the the look of the actual armor from the movie the paint or the the exact color of the paint may be a bit off but it's pretty much there you know it's pretty much accurate only not a hundred percent for a six inch figure this is as detailed as you know uh, an Iron Man armor could go so it has a very fine detailing here sculpting wise and one thing I really appreciate about this figure is um, someone out there really uh, took the time to measure the the scale when you know when scaling down the actual armor from life size to six inch um, scale if you look at the circumference of the head uh, compared to you know the bulkiness of the entire armor you know the circumference of the thigh and the arms it does look unnatural you know it looks like an actual human being could fit inside having an armor this size you know at least a regular sized um, human being so um, that's it um, as far as you know the the scaling uh, portion my figure have this one imperfection you know just um, coming from the factory itself actually it has two one of them is you know you could see here there's a tiny uh, bleeding from the red you know going to the gold and the th the second flaw in my figure is it has a shorter neck compared to other figures of the same exact you know um product i don't know if they did quality control on the neck of this figure since other figures if you try to of course um articulate the neck upwards it you would see some gapage here i'm not sure if they tried to get rid of that so they tried to position the neck of this figure lower compared to you know the the previous um releases but on mine i'm not sure this may be a factory defect but or also a, a result of quality control so i'm not sure anyway um with that uh, being said of course um due to that neck of my figure being you know um positioned lower than other necks it does hinder the articulation so the neck of my figure only moves like this much if you try to move the head up it only goes up that much you know it's not as extreme as the other figures of the same product um, let's see what else here um, as far as imperfections that's um, all I see here and of course um, the joints you know the joints are very functional I appreciate the range especially for a single single joint um, you know um, 
articulation however I'm looking from the side I don't know if you could see that guys but looking at this it does remind me of you know a wheel of a roller blade same with the you know the the, the joint here at the back of the knee so going to articulation it does have this um the head does look left and right of course and as I've uh, showed you earlier it does look uh, very limited and it does look down this much on my figure at least uh, the shoulder portion it have this uh, floating piece here for a uh, shoulder armor which of course uh, freely follows the the arms as it moves so you could uh, move the the arm outwards this much and of course being hindered by this by this um, shoulder armor you can move it forward and back it has a bicep swivel it has single joint and elbow but due to that you know a disc joint the awkward disc joint uh, for some reason the the function is you know great on on this uh, figure as far as you know um articulation wise so it it does um bend on the arm here um, more than 90 degrees and on the forearm it does have the swivel motion and on the wrist it does have this tilting motion or a hinge joint which uh, allows the the hand to tilt forward and tilt back I don't know if you could see that so it does a tilt forward and tilt back and of course it does have this swivel motion as well the the wrist guard here is a soft rubbery material to which you know um have a tendency of a warpage if you position the hands you know the hand a certain way so for me I wouldn't even uh, try the interchangeable hands on this figure since I, I I want my the wrist guard of my figure to remain this way you know um, being uh, fitted snugly into the the hands and on the abdominal portion it does have this you know um, layers of armor here this right here at the highest portion of the ab it is uh, a you know independent uh, part here and for the the next um, two layers of armors here underneath this part they do move independent from each other thus provide you know the figure a natural look when you you know when you try to bend the torso so it does uh, bend forward this much and it does uh, bend backwards that much of course on the crotch area here this this crotch piece is actually you know um, like a floating part as well it's a it's a separate part which you could uh, of course move up and down so I, w I would highly suggest moving this thing up prior to you know um lifting the the legs forward you know just to prevent the rubbing and uh, paint chipping there so the leg does move forward this much which is a great range and it does move back this much being hindered by this uh, gluteal uh, portion here on the hip of course um, it does um, have this splitting motion as well however it's very limited but it's there so I still you know still greatly appreciated it's being hindered of course by the amount of sculpting on the hip portion of this figure even after they made this you know crotch area I mean um, of a uh, flying piece or a floating piece on the thigh it does have this swivel however hindered by this sculpting here on the side of the leg this uh, gold piece here and of course the knees bend this much even though it's single jointed but due to that figma disc joint it does uh, at least you know give us the same range as most of the double jointed uh, fi you know double jointed knees uh, from other figures on the ankle area it does have the side to side tilting and of course it could uh, have the foot point upwards that much and downwards this much these two uh, armor piece right here at the front of the foot or the ankle and behind the ankle are soft rubbery material as well um, just to provide you a greater range of motion for you know for ankle articulation on the toe it does have this independent joint as well and it has a decent range however if you move it down you would show some gappage here and um, it's not really that big of a problem since 
Um, I don't see myself, you know, I'm posing my figure like with the toes pointing down like that. Of course, um, pretty much uh, that's it for the articulation of the figure. Let's do a quick 360 here and then size comparison. So as far as this figure, however, you know, I just want to talk about the price point. It did cost me $89.99 and of course that's before shipping. And for that price point for a figure this, um, of course, this big, which is a 6 inch figure, or at least a six inch scale figure um, for me it cost a, b a bit on the expensive side I mean even though with all this detail and you know the the quality of paint I still wasn't willing to pay you know eighty nine dollars and ninety nine cents for a six inch figure the only reason why I purchased this guy is I waited a year for you know just to see if uh, this guy could would be on one of those clearance sales but it didn't happen and I got desperate since I was a bit you know um, I was in need of a decent six inch scale Iron Man figure to um, of course to complete you know my my six inch scale um, collection as far as you know the Avengers and with that being said I had to purchase him at you know at the full price even um, by waiting after a year I was worried that they may wipe this figure out of the market and you know online sellers such as you know the eBay sellers they may once this thing uh, is out of the market they may start selling this guy for ridiculous prices which would uh, make it more you know um, less attainable for me so I just I just decided to purchase the figure with uh, its current price with that um, price of course um, you could always the, with that same exact price you could purchase a figure like this from an you know from its standard MSRP also cost the exact same amount but this is the amount of difference as far as how much material or how much plastic they used for that same amount of money I do understand that this figure um, on its price there is a lot of factors to be considered especially that he is not supposed to be uh, sold here in the states so um well there's a lot of factors so i understand the, you know where the price point was coming from but still at the end of the day it's a six inch figure so let's do some size comparison here and then uh, we can go ahead and end the video and of course thank you guys for uh, staying with me here um, throughout this video if by this time you already ended the video still thank you for at least you know um, checking the video out so of course I would uh, first try to compare him with a standard Marvel Legends Iron Man figure let's compare him real quick to this uh, Mark 42 armor from Marvel Legends, you know, one of the newer figure from Hasbro. Well, it's not really a new figure, but in comparison to the older Marvel Legends. And of course, um, here he is compared to Prince Namor. You could also try and compare, you know, see for yourselves the difference in uh, the, the paint job and of course the, the detailing. And here he is compared to this um, Ultimate Goblin. I don't have too many figures here to compare, you know, within my reach. So I apologize about that, guys. If you want to see more comparison about this guy, just let me know. I will make a separate video for that. And uh, pretty much that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope this video helped in, you know, the deciding factor whether to uh, purchase this figure for yourself or not. Um, if you could see this figure around uh, at least seventy dollars to sixty-five dollars, if you could see him on a sale, I would say it's a it's a steal. I would definitely uh, grab that figure at that price point. But for eighty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents, I would definitely you know put a lot of things into consideration, such as you know things such as is it worth to have this figure, you know in a, in addition to your collection you know to which most of us already have a bunch of Iron Man figures in their set so once again thank you guys I'll see you soon and Flip Young here checking out goodbye